order. Statement, the Prime Minister. After being nominated as the new leader of the Conservative Party and invited to form a new government by the Queen, Boris Johnson officially became the UK's Prime Minister on Wednesday. That evening, he was able to organise his entire new cabinet, an impressive feat, especially considering it was the biggest cabinet reshuffle since 1962. Though maybe the fact that his whim was obvious from months in advance gave him a little extra time to prepare for this eventuality. Either way, we explain his new cabinet in an article on our website. There's a link to that in the description if you're interested. Also up on our site, there's an article about the Labour anti-Semitism scandal, so check that out while you're there. Anyway, that's enough self-promotion for the moment. After Johnson's busy evening of hiring and firing, he headed to Parliament to speak to the House of Commons for the first time as Prime Minister. And that's what we're going to discuss in today's video. You might be thinking, sure, it's a new Prime Minister, he's speaking to Parliament for the first time as PM. It's a big moment, but does it really matter? Well, it's an opportunity for him to set up his Premiership, a chance to show MPs and the public what he stands for, and why he's different to his predecessor. So in this video, we're going to review some of the key things Johnson said in his two and a half hour session in Parliament, during which time he answered 129 questions. A strong start. In this video, we're going to show you some clips of the action, and then discuss what it means for the UK going forward. So enough talking, let's get on with it. Order. Statement. The Prime Minister. Yeah. Make a statement on the mission of this new Conservative government. Our mission is to deliver Brexit on the 31st of October for the purpose of uniting and re-energising our great United Kingdom and making this country the greatest place on earth. And when I say the greatest place on earth, I'm conscious that some may accuse me of hyperbole. But it is useful to imagine the trajectory on which we could now be embarked. By 2050, it is more than possible that the United Kingdom will be the greatest and most prosperous economy in Europe, at the centre of a new network of trade deals, which we have pioneered. We will have closed forever the productivity gap and seen to it that no town is left behind ever again. Our children and grandchildren will be living longer, happier and healthier lives. And our kingdom in 2050 will no longer make any contribution whatsoever to the destruction of our precious planet brought about by carbon emissions. We will be the home of electric vehicles, cars, even planes, powered by British-made battery technology. We will be the seedbed for the most exciting and most dynamic business investments on the planet. By the potential of our, of our great country. Clearly, Johnson has started his speech in a way that most incoming leaders do, by talking about the greatness of the country he is about to lead. Think of recent examples like Donald Trump's inauguration and his speech about US greatness. This is a way to demonstrate your patriotism and dedication for the role as leader of the country. As Johnson is presiding over the British exit from the European Union, he made sure to include in his speech the success that Britain will have in the future, mentioning for example the development of British planes and the reduction of net carbon to zero. By painting this picture of a prosperous, independent Britain, he's undoubtedly seeking to reassure the country that irrespective of what's happening with Brexit, he and his administration will ensure that Britain will still be prosperous. This has been cemented by his criticism of Labour for being cynical following Burko's intervention. In doing this, he's attempted to brand the Conservatives as a party of optimism and embracing change and Brexit, and painting Labour as the party of the past, of cynicism, of rejecting change. And to do so, we must take some immediate steps. And the first is to restore trust in our democracy and fulfil the repeated promises of Parliament by coming out of the European Union and doing so on October the 31st. I and all ministers are committed to leaving on this date, whatever the circumstances. I would prefer us to leave the EU with a deal. I would much prefer it. I believe that it is possible even at this late stage, and I will work flat out to make it happen. But certain things need to be clear. The withdrawal agreement negotiated by my predecessor has been three times rejected. Its terms are unacceptable to this parliament and to this country. For our part, we are ready to negotiate in good faith an alternative. In this section of his speech, Johnson attempted to distance himself from his predecessor. 
He's already shown why he believes that the Conservatives are the right party to carry out Brexit, and now he's demonstrating why he believes that he'll be able to succeed where Theresa May didn't. In saying that we'll leave on the 31st of October to restore trust in democracy, he's implying that by not leaving at the end of March, Theresa May damaged trust in democracy, and that by setting a date in stone and leaving whatever the circumstances, will restore this trust that's been lost. In saying that he'd like to leave with a deal, Johnson is again attempting to show that he can be trusted. He will aim to negotiate a deal and try and pass it through Parliament, but unlike May, if it's not passed, he's prepared to leave on the 31st of October without a deal. This might be a good strategy, as he may scare some people who might vote a deal down because it's too hard a Brexit into supporting it in order to avoid a no-deal exit. However, it might pave the way for the UK to leave without a deal, as Johnson now cannot go back on his promise. If he was to extend the deadline, he would have shown himself to have lied, and will suffer for criticising May for extending the deadline and then doing the exact same thing himself. This is particularly important to bear in mind when you consider how little time there is left before the exit date. We'll be releasing a full video into Johnson's Brexit plan and what the EU think of it on Sunday, so be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified when that video is out. If they do not, we will of course have to leave the UK without an agreement under Article 50. The UK is better prepared for that situation than many believe. In the 98 days that remain to us, we must turbocharge our preparations to make sure that there is as little disruption as possible with the kind of national effort that the British people have made before and will make again. As we mentioned moments ago, no deal is fundamental to Johnson's Brexit plans. He relies on it as a counterbalance during negotiations, so it seems only logical that he'd want to increase preparations for a no deal. As I said, we'll dive deeper into this on Sunday, but it's worth noting his optimism in British patriotism and strength when alluding to other national efforts, such as those surrounding the world wars. We will also ensure that we will continue to attract the best and brightest talent. No one believes more strongly than me in the benefits of migration to our country. But I am clear that our immigration system must change for years. Politicians have promised the public an Australian-style points-based system, and today I will actually deliver on those promises in a radical rewriting of our immigration system. And I am convinced that we can produce a system that the British public can have confidence in. Johnson, contrary to what some might expect, has had positive things to say about immigrants and immigration throughout his time in Parliament yesterday. However, he is keen to ensure that Britain is better able to select the people who enter the country. If you want us to cover this issue in more detail, and the so-called Australian-style immigration system, then we can do that in another video, because honestly we don't have time here. Give this video a like, and comment down below to let us know if you want us to do that. So now let's look at Johnson's plans for domestic issues, health, crime, education, and infrastructure. We're going to start right away, providing vital funding for our frontline public services to deliver better health care, better education and more police on the streets. Mr Speaker, I am committed to making sure that the NHS receives the funds it deserves. I have asked officials to provide policy proposals for drastically reducing waiting times and for GP appointments. Could Britain Trump take this opportunity to rule out once and for all that our NHS is not going to be part of any trade deal, any trade deal with President Trump and the USA. Under no circumstances would we agree to any deal, any free trade deal that put the NHS on the table. It is not for, it is not for sale and to address the rise of violent crime in our country. I have announced that there will be 20,000 extra police keeping us safe over the next three years. Priority. We will give greater powers, powers resisted, by the way, by the party opposite, uh, to the police to use stop and search to help tackle violent crimes. On education, I have listened to the concerns of so many colleagues around the House. And we will increase the minimum level of people funding in primary and secondary schools. A lot of his policies here seem a little more reminiscent of Labour governments than of a party that's become increasingly associated with austerity. However, Johnson clearly wants to improve public services and show real benefits of Brexit before it's even happened. We are committed to levelling up across every nation and region of the UK, providing support to towns and cities and closing the opportunity gap in our society. We will announce investment in vital infrastructure, full fibre, rollout, transport and housing that can improve the quality of people's life, fuel economic growth 
and provide opportunity. Throughout his time in Parliament yesterday, especially throughout the questioning phase, Johnson was very pro-union and repeatedly rejected the idea of a second Scottish independence referendum, reiterating that the 2014 referendum was supposed to be a once-in-a-generation vote. He clearly doesn't want to be, as one MP described it, the last Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Mr Speaker, over the past few years, too many people in this country feel that they have been told repeatedly what we cannot do. Since I was a child, I remember respectable authorities asserting that our time as a nation has passed, that we should be content with mediocrity and managed decline. Time and again, by their powers to innovate and to adapt, the British people have showed the doubters wrong. And, Mr Speaker, I believe that at this pivotal moment in our national story, we are going to prove the doubters wrong again. That is the mission of the Cabinet I have appointed, and that is the purpose of the Government. We will be able to look back on this period as the beginning of a new golden age for our United Kingdom. How you feel about this section of Johnson's speech will likely depend on how you feel about Johnson and Brexit more generally. Johnson's supporters will see it as the optimism the country needs, the faith and belief that are required to get Brexit done. His detractors will call it the kind of misplaced optimism, British exceptionalism and jingoism that is now so associated with Brexit. One man who definitely didn't agree with Johnson's unbridled optimism is the leader of the opposition, Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I welcome the right honourable gentleman to his position. No one underestimates this country, but the country is deeply worried that the new Prime Minister overestimates himself. He inherits a country that's been held back by nine years of austerity. Their housing costs are higher than ever. Their jobs are lower paid. Opportunity and freedom have been taken away. In today's video, we'll leave you with these remarks from Johnson. Mr Speaker, today is the first day of a new approach, which will end with our exit from the EU on the 31st of October. Then I hope we can have a friendly and constructive relationship in facing the challenges that lie ahead. I believe that is possible, and this government will work to make it so. Order, I thank the Prime Minister most warmly on this his debut outing at the dispatch box for his answers and for his patience and courtesy and for responding to 129 inquisitors. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more of our content in the future. Also, if you want to be notified when our videos are posted, be sure to hit that bell icon. Also, you can find us across other social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. And if you want your name featured at the end of videos like these people, then make sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.